the presentation. Okay, great. So uh, today we're going to talk about um, proxy in concept of in in uh, context of uh, Java services. So uh, as uh, I was presenting, my name is Dmitry Mohun. I worked ma mainly with uh, Java backend, and it was mainly Java. I'm currently working at Atlassian, and uh, it's actually where uh, we encounter such a problem that I want to describe here. So. We're going to talk uh, about uh, what proxy is uh, in general, its types. Uh, we'll, we'll see some uh, real world example on some service. And uh, after that, we'll uh, look into uh, Java libraries for proxy and uh, do some comparison. So uh, what uh, right off the bat, a little disclaimer here. So uh, what we're going to talk is not a GDK uh, a Spring proxy. It's not uh, a proxy pattern either. So it's uh, more akin to an infrastructure proxy. And uh, uh, per Wikipedia, it's more correctly called uh, proxy server. So it's a server application that acts as an intermediary for requests from clients, seeking resources from servers that provide those resources. So uh, pretty simple concept, as yes, we'll see in, in a few minutes. So <clears throat> uh, what type types of proxy actually are? So uh, first one is uh, called for a proxy. It's what actually people call a proxy in general. So uh, it just thinks that, that you set a connection to and uh, the for a proxy retrieves data from the internet. So <laughs> pretty simple, it, uh, uh, it basically is used for accessing restricted geolocations and uh, it also can be used to make you anonymous uh, on the internet. Uh, I, for example, like to think about for a proxy uh, akin uh, to um, VPN. Uh, however, it's not uh, necessarily true because uh, VPN provides a, a secure channel for you. And uh, for our proxy is generally used to uh, uh, to give you some uh, restricted routes. So uh, so basically that's it about for our proxy. And uh, the second type is uh, a reverse proxy. So a reverse proxy is a type proxy server that sits on behalf of a web server. And it controls uh, access and ensures that the user would not communicate directly with an origin server. So basically, uh, you are making a request on the internet to some resource. This re request goes to, goes to reverse proxy, and you don't know it, actually. And the reverse proxy that, um, um, assigns a particular server on the backend that will actually serve this request. So uh, basically, it uh, con controls access and ensures users, users will not communicate directly with uh, an origin server. So um, uh, basically, it's used. To balance the load between between internal servers, it uh, can can also keep uh, cache or local contents, so it will not be additional uh, requests. Uh, and uh, one of the uses also can be that it provides uh, security-less communication among others. So uh, maybe there are questions regarding this up to this, this point. Uh, okay, so uh, we'll look at a real example. Uh, <clears throat> hope hope it will, it will be more uh, clear after that. So uh, yeah, but uh, to, to summarize, so ex actually, uh, for proxies uh, ensures that the website never com communicate uh, directly with the user. So you hit the for a proxy and then it goes to the internet and the reverse proxy, uh, vice versa. So you make a request on the internet, it goes to reverse proxy and then it is uh, redirected to, to particular web server. So uh, 
a real a real example so you have uh, your clients that uh, make request to your service it can be a uh, api request for example however in uh, some cases your clients uh, while communicated with communicating with you should also make requests to third party resources on the internet so for example uh, if that is if client in this case is ui so UI make uh, also have may also have a need to make requests to some whatever resources, whatever resources that are needed for a correct work with your service. So uh, yeah, so here everything is okay. However, when your clients are uh, behind the firewall, it's it's cold. So for example, your clients are users for a, a, of a particular company and they're using your service. So uh, your service should be obviously whitelisted on customer's firewall. However, uh, third-party request is a little bit more complex because uh, uh, third-party services can be deployed on OS Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services has a particularly wide range of IPs. And uh, it's not that simple to whitelist uh, basically hold the internet for a customer. So in this case, what we can do, uh, uh, it can be done in a way that uh, third party request goes through firewall to your service. So your service continues to be uh, basically main service. It's a J JVM uh, application uh, deployed uh, and uh, executing your business logic. However, in this case, it can also be a proxy. So if you can go back to this slide, basically your service is also a reverse proxy here. There is there, basically there are no web server. Like uh, your your uh, your service is on the web server, and at the same time on as access server proxy reverse proxy. So uh, what actually should we do with this third party request? We should redirect re them to uh, uh, correct uh, hosts that they were originally tempted to. So. Uh, uh, basically, that's what we're going to talk about here, and it's a uh, pretty simple concept. So, how we can do this? Of course, we can implement this yourself. You can just create uh, your, for example, if you're using, uh, basically, whatever you're using is either it's a typical uh, G2E application, or even if it's a Spring. You can just create this custom serlet if uh, and uh, basically do, do redirect either into get or whatever method or whatever HTTP request you're trying to handle or in the service method. So uh, yeah, that's, that's all it is required. So, but basically, usually you uh, don't need to redirect, redirect just a get. You you should handle also all requests. Uh, like like post put like creation and also you typically you uh, require some additional functionality like uh, custom headers uh, uh, authentication uh, load balancing and others so basically there are open source uh, libraries uh, available in public you look into each of them uh, for example, like uh, first is pretty simple smile is HTTP proxy servlet. The second it is um, a zoo library from Netflix. Then it's a Spring Cloud, Cloud Gateway from uh, currently uh, embedded into Spring. And uh, also there is one called uh, Chiron. So basically we can do just that. We can look uh into first so please tell me do you see a uh, idea yeah yes yes okay so uh, basically uh the first one is a route proxy so it, it just uh, uh 
just a simple dependency. Uh, it's very simple. It's only uh, it's two classes, but uh, uh, main serlet is only one class. So actually, you can just also import this to your project uh, if you want some uh, customizations or extendability. Uh, so uh, I just uh, added it as a dependency to uh, to Maven. So, and in this case, I'm creating uh, a servlet. Uh, this servlet is uh, from a library. So, I, I don't provide, like, uh, uh, I'm not extending this servlet. It just uh, servlet used in uh, directly from a library. And in this case, I'm creating the bin to be used in Spring project. So, uh, bin with this roulette. So, a regi registering roulette is a bin, basically. And uh, what is required is uh, you, you, you provide a um, serrat URL. This URL is that your, uh, your users are going to hit. In this case, we are going to hit this uh, endpoint. And target URL is a, a URL that we're going to be redirected to by, uh, but by our proxy, by our, <laughs> actually, by our service. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we provide this target URL. Target URL is uh, so sorry, in the com. We just had in that uh, login uh, to false and even just read, read from this bin. So, this bin is currently registered in the Spring. We can, we can just go directly to uh, localhost, it's on port 8081. Uh, you just you're seeing uh, Firefox right now, right? Yeah. Uh, what do you see currently? I can see the browser. Okay, great. Yeah, so <laughs> actually, you just saw that uh, it redirected to uh, com. Basically, well, how it's customized is uh, that here is an asterisk. So uh, it's uh, basically a context passes that we can uh, write right in URL. So again, if we provide uh, Java community, for example, like some get, this is get will be uh, redirected to sysring.com. It does not have such a context pass. So yeah, so we basically receive valid uh, 104. So yeah, pretty simple. That's it. Uh, uh, actually, I like this library. It's uh, pretty min minimalistic. You can just and you use it. Uh, can you can use it in this post Spring and M MVC. And however, it does not have uh, some more customizations, like for example, library tool. It's another example. Uh, so uh, uh, here uh, we should uh, first start uh, some simple service called book. So it's already started on port 8090. Uh, Just two points available and checked out regarding books. And it also has a separate module for actual gateway. So uh, in this case, we'd also provide uh, property. So Azul treats this property as books, is um, actually a um, name route, and also uh, name of context path that you should hit uh, while providing a con concrete URL for it to be redirected. So this one property actually will, will, will redirect all requests start with books to this host. So if we go to uh, this port, uh, we, yeah, I already have it here. So you can just go to books and available. And yeah, it just red redirects to, to this endpoint. The same with uh, checked out. So, or uh, we can also customize it in a way that, um, for example, 
for example, I like this form more because it, it's more readable. Basically, it's the same. Uh, so we, however, it will not be books. So we should type uh, uh, available right after uh, whose name. So proxy name is not uh, treated in any way by lib here. So we just uh, like this proxy name is name of the route. So however, it's almost the same as this config, but more readable. Yeah, and uh, yeah, basically this is regarding proxy and Zool. Uh, one more thing, <clears throat> Zool is uh, part of a network's portfolio of of frameworks. So basically, uh, they also have a ribbon. A ribbon is uh, for a client load balancing. And uh, every case of module of ribbon, it's for uh, service discovery. So uh, they use it or use it in their uh, infrastructure. So we don't need it here. So uh, yeah, we just uh, turn, turn this off. However, uh, that basically is one of the, uh, I would say maybe pro or, pro or corns as you see it, uh, because uh, Zool is uh, actually is tied uh, tied to um, Netflix infrastructure. So yeah, you should uh, consider. Uh, uh, do you actually need all these other modules of uh, Zool? Uh, what uh, supersedes Zool is uh, Spring Cloud Gateway. Uh, <clears throat> so it ha also has a uh, property configuration. And by this case, uh, I chose uh, um, configuration in Java. So th this example is also its official example for uh, Spring. So uh, in this case, uh, we just create in the route. The uh, route uh, should be in the form of predicate. And so we just provide in a path here with get. If we provide in a filter, uh, we set out a custom uh, request header, it's hello world. Hello is a header name and world is its value. And uh, we're doing this for this URI. This URI is basically HTTP bin. So our request to local, local host on this port. And uh, using get endpoint, we'll go to HTTP bin. Uh, so actually, here we can see some difference. If we go to HTTP bin uh, get endpoint directly and compare it with a response that we receive here, so we can see in uh, proxy request as, as our hello uh, header. However, we can also see that there is uh, some additional header called forwarded. So basically, it's an indicator that the request was uh, served uh, not directly by a uh, origin host, but by, uh, forwarded by our proxy. So here is a port actually, uh, proxy host name. Uh, and uh, also, it has, it's been, uh, we can differentiate here it by IP in the origin. So here. We, uh, we have also uh, just IP of a uh, client, it's me. But here we can also see uh, IP of a proxy. So yeah, it's uh, some indicators that the request was proxy, you can uh, detect, detect by uh, custom uh, response. So uh, if we go back, to idea, basically uh, that's it regarding uh, Spring Cloud Gateway. However, they also provided some requests, some um, example regarding um, uh, circuit breaker. It's uh, actually a technique that used when um, uh, origin server is uh, serving requests poorly. So. Uh, for example, it's not re reliable. Uh, there is some um, a test endpoint on HT bin is it provides some delay. So uh, in this case, we are going to test it by uh, actually adding a custom host history.com. 
and uh, a clock gateway already has embedded historic functionality. Uh, it's in the form of, of a filter, which is send, uh, saying, uh, setting the uh, name of the uh, config and we're setting the fallback URI. So in this case, when uh, HTTP uh, request will not uh, return response there, uh, instantaneously, we have a separate point or, or <laughs> they configure a separate point is fallback. So, uh, and uh, yeah, we're just going to return uh, some uh, mono actually. Yeah, we're going, we're going to look into that more because uh, Spring Lang Gateway, it's, uh, it uses web flux. So uh, yeah, mono is uh, asynchronous. You're crazy, it just returns the string. So in this case, we're, we're going to do a request to our local host. Which will redirect to a um, delay endpoint uh, with three milliseconds on um, HTTP. In. And in this case, yeah, it just receive fullback. It's a string. So, uh, yeah, basically, that's it uh, about Cloud Gateway. Uh, maybe there are some questions regarding the slips. Okay, there is one more lip library. It's called Sharon. Sharon uh, uh, has Java configurations. Uh, so it's in the form of a spring configuration as a pin. So we just set, uh, set in uh, origin server as an outgoing server here. So uh, we're, in this case, we're going to redirect our previous book application on port uh, 8090 and uh, it's going to be uh, for all requests. So we just set, set in a request mapping. So not, not particular routes. So in this case, it's on port uh, 9010. And uh, one endpoint, yeah, it was available, available books, the same as checked out. Checked. Yeah, so <laughs> simple. Simple configuration, however, Chiron, as they claim that uh, they have ex extensive uh, customizability. Uh, so it, uh, we can customize, for example, configuration per Spring profiles. We can uh, customize it, of course, per um, uh, specific routes. We can use uh, regex and uh, etc. So uh, yeah, basically uh, that's it regarding Sharon. The one more thing is uh, I consider is as an advantage, advantage compared to other libraries because Sharon um, supports both uh, Spring MVC and WebFlux. So uh, as we look also later, uh, Spring Cloud Gate uh, supports uh, at the moment on only um, the flux. So yeah, basically this, this is a short view of uh, libraries. As we can see, uh, um, basically all of them, not, I'm not sure about your own, all of them provide uh, customizations, uh, uh, configurations uh, through properties. And I uh, think this is pretty useful. Uh, because you can see directly in the properties what, what what hosts you are redirecting to. Yes, so you can see uh, what endpoint you're going to hit and what uh, response from what host you're going to receive. So uh, yeah, um, we can go back to uh, presentation. So uh... sorry, I have a question. Could I ask? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, as, and, and, uh, as I understand, uh, there are three main goals to use reverse proxy. The first one is load balances, the second one is security uh, related issues, and the third one is uh, some kind of reducing network uh, traffic or something like that. Uh, currently, I, I saw you had, have uh, displayed uh, the only redirections. But uh, in some of property files, I saw that uh, there are some configuration. It's probably it, it probably would be, uh, will 
was on uh, Zul. Yeah. There were, oh, sorry, no. Yeah, it's. Uh, there, yeah, there were it's different. Yeah, yeah. Currently, we can see a difference uh, paths to switch. Which kind of paths uh, will uh, choose uh, our reverse proxy when we are going, when we will go to the localhost 8090? Mm, sorry, I didn't quite understand. So you're asking about this uh, configuration or this one? It looks like uh, light there. We are looking for for example the, the second point, the lines okay. from four to eight. Uh, looks like here it should work some kind of load balancing, as I understand. Uh, no, not exactly. It's just the same configuration. So as I described here, so. Um, uh, yes, we can enable uh, some uh, additional uh, modules of uh, basically Spring Zool, not Zool in particular. However, it's, it's disabled here. So Ribbon is, uh, provides a client load balancing. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it's just an additional module. In this case, we're, we're just looking into uh, proxy capabilities of Zool. So uh, basically, uh, yeah, it's a good question because Zool there are uh, two versions. Uh, first one is uh, was um, a blocking, mm -hmm. and it was part of a uh, Spring uh, Spring Cloud, and uh, then they released uh, version two of Zool. However, it was not included into a Spring, and uh, yeah. So basically, in this case, we we're uh, we're using. Um, the ones that from the Spring, Spring Cloud, starting at like Zool. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, do you have some uh, examples uh, which are related to a uh, load balancing? Uh, no, not really. Because actually, for this, uh, yeah, we'll look into this later. Because. Yeah. Uh, yeah fine. Thank you. Uh, yeah, because a load balancing. <laughs> okay, we'll look into that. Uh, so examples uh, provided are only for proxying. So basically, it's the main topic of the presentation. So uh, yeah, and if we go back actually to presentation, so uh, to summarize. So first one the library we looked into is a smallish HTTP proxy roulette. So uh, as I said, it's simple, minimalistic, and extendable. You can just basically create your own roulette on basis of this one. From this library, you can just, uh, <laughs> of course, uh, probably there is some uh, uh, license, but uh, even with uh, importing by your package manager, you can just extend uh, their servlet and provide some additional functionality on top of it. So uh, the plus pluses of it are that it support, support uh, typical GTE by configuration in WebXML, uh, both uh, Spring MVC and uh, Spring Boot, and as well uh, they also support uh, pretty straightforward for uh, Drop Wizard. Second one is uh, uh, Zool from Netflix. So uh, as we just uh, talked, uh, yeah, it's a part of uh, what it actually was part because um, uh, it now it's a maintenance mode. Uh, it still will have some, uh, some as I looked into last time, it still has some uh, security uh, patches, but it's not maintained anymore. And uh, one one deal breaker is that it's not supported the string boot greater than 2.4. And uh, actually it was, uh, a stopping point for us because uh, when we upgraded the spring, uh, Zool just stops working. So, uh, for example, in our case, we just switched to um, a simple HTTP proxy roulette. So, we have a handful of uh, redirections. So, so, in this case, it currently is working for us. Maybe uh, when we'll have problems with uh, scaling yeah, and the requests. Uh, amount will be too big. Maybe we'll switch to Spring Cloud Gateway. However, Spring Cloud Gateway uh, on the other side, uh, yeah, first of all, it's uh, an unblocking and synchronous APIs using the flags. And one of the, uh, the cons is that it's currently it's not compatible with Spring Boot MVC. So if you have uh, MVC code 
MSE endpoints in your application, you should actually, uh, as, as I claim, you should delete uh, Spring Boot MVC starter firmware application. However, uh, probably for most, it will not, not be a problem because um, it, uh, it should be fixed, but uh, all, uh, only just by uh, uh, using uh, separate dependency for <laughs> for Spring for uh, the flux. Uh, and one of the pluses of it also is it supports web sockets, on contrary to Zool, because uh, Zool one, the version of one, it does not support web sockets. It is also a churn Spring, uh, Spring Boot starter library. So uh, yes, as we said, it was highly, it is highly configurable, and. Uh, yeah, also big plus, it supports both, both uh, reactive requests and uh, typical MVC requests. Or, of course, you can just, uh, as we said, you can just do this. Uh, maybe, uh, of course, per your needs, you, you, you will handle all the uh, HTTP requests that you need in addition to get provide uh, all the uh, additional functionalities like citing headers, uh, authentication that uh, that you need. And yeah, so basically in this case, you will have full control. You, will, uh, you won't have the need to import an additional library. However, you will have no community support uh, from uh, basically from open source people. Yeah, from uh, for uh, because all these projects are open source and you will have to Maintain it, maintain it by yourself. So uh, yeah, so going back to um, actually what we can do more with uh, uh, proxy libraries. So basically, uh, I would suggest suggest uh, to ask yourself: Do you really need to proxy by your service? For example, uh, yeah, because uh, given that. For example, do you need to actually load balance by your service? How you will handle additional load if a request amount that are originally intended to third party services are actually too big to handle for your service or prepared to scale your service with JVM application just to handle the request to be proxied. So yeah, so basically it's a thing to think about and the other thing can is uh, authentication. So uh, you probably should think uh, how you're going to authenticate um, uh, um, requests to an origin server. Basically, uh, just a simple example. For example, as they're using a GVT beer authentication, so it's going to be a beer header in a beer uh, string in the authentication header. So, however, uh, what if you're want to also use this authentication in uh, to your service to proxy request so but obviously it will not work uh, in this case it probably will be an option to actually handle uh, authentication by your service uh, if, i mean uh, meaning inside your service uh, to s or some uh, origin uh, uh, services or maybe just use like, for example, basic OS to a proxy, proxy request and uh, some other OS to uh, an origin server. Yeah, so uh, in this case, if you, uh, if uh, you, you can look into uh, some functionality of app servers, because most probably uh, when your application is deployed on production, there is already some web server and uh, some open source web servers uh, contain already proxy, proxy functionality uh, they, uh, in, it's inside of them. So uh, well, some examples are Apache, uh, Nginx, uh, and also there is such, such service, server called Caddy. All of them uh, have proxy embedded. Or you can also um, start to dedicate this reverse proxy server, which will do, just do uh, reverse proxy uh, without uh, additional functionality. Uh, this web service have like uh, load balancing, uh, 
like some additional uh, customizations so uh, there are also some uh, open source open source one like ha proxy squid and uh, there is also a popular commercial solution called cloudflare so yeah that, that's just the things uh, i uh, think you should uh, consider because um uh, bottom line, uh, proxy by your uh, Java server is not a uh, common uh, solution. Uh, so uh, it uh, probably it work for uh, some requests, but but if you need uh, uh, some, uh, if you have a, a really a problem uh, to, uh, that you need to proxy, so basically maybe better solution will, will be to fix it in uh, by your infrastructure by, the, by what we just uh, described here so basically uh, that's all <clears throat> so uh, what questions do you have 